Helen Sharman, first British astronaut and operations manager at Imperial College London. I became the first British astronaut because I actually just applied for the job. Um, suddenly there was an opportunity available that just hadn't been around for British people before and I applied for it. Um, there was a selection process, a lot of medical, psychological tests and really space flight medicals so being whizzed around in the centrifuge so that we could see if we could withstand the g-forces of a launch and um, eventually I was chosen to go and do the training. After about 15 months of training it was decided that I would be prime candidate from Britain and the person who was training with me became back up and three months after that I actually got to launch into space. I often wonder why I was chosen um, for that particular you know job of being an astronaut and I think there's, there's a lot of different aspects to it. You need to be physically fit, you need to be able to learn Russian quickly certainly then and now it's a good language to learn um, on the International Space Station. Um, you need to be a scientist or an engineer, somebody who can practically do experiments with their, with their hands, who can um, practically fix bits of the spacecraft if necessary and who can logically think through certain problems and fix stuff, you know, work out what's wrong and mend things. Um, and then somebody really who's just going to be able to get on well with the rest of the crew. Um, so be a, a relatively level-headed, um, not terribly excitable, not terribly depressive, you know, somebody who's just fairly level, what I would call a normal kind of person. I think astronauts are only scared or nervous about their space flight if they don't really um, fully understand all of the um, things that are going on during the launch. So for instance, if you're an astronaut on one of the older shuttle missions um, where there were many people flying into space at the same time, seven astronauts on one shuttle, um, a few of them had to really understand what was going on and the others were just passengers. And I think sometimes when I've spoken to some of those other people, the real sort of the, the, the passengers during the launch, and um, they then had their jobs to do later on in space, but then they were a bit nervous, some of them. But the people who actually have to actively take part in that launch, because they really understand what's going on, and probably because their minds are focused on it as well, they tend not to be scared at all. And I don't remember it being a nervous time. It was just like um, an exciting day, but a day when all I had to do was then the job that I'd been trained to do. And that's quite an easy thing to do, actually. I think perhaps the most difficult question to answer is what was the most unexpected part of being in space? Um, unexpected part, because the training was so good, almost everything was thought about, um, even if something happened that we didn't really want to happen, we'd still trained for it. So a manual docking, for instance, um, or when we didn't have enough electric power, um, we, we sort of knew what we had to do when the lights went out. Um, I suppose what I, I really wasn't prepared for um, so much was um, that the, the thoughts that you have when you look out of the window, when you look back at Earth, um, you can't, because you can't see individual people, but you do remember individual people um, and it's that sort of connection that we feel the relationships we have in life that are really very important in life um, and I love my work I love science I loved being in space but I think in the end we all need to remember that people are important very important you want to make sure that the spacecraft is going to function properly once it's in space 